When you look at games that can be classified as worlds, as opposed to just linear experiences, I think that there are only a handful of games that you can point your finger at, and most of those are going to be MMOs or MMORPGs. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the few games, I think, that has ever come out which truly provides you with a massive living world where the NPCs have their own lives, they have their tasks, they go on about their business, whether or not you're there or not, and when it comes to the story of the game, there is a main storyline that you can pursue, uh, and that does have a linear path of from point A to point B, but there's also a nearly infinite amount of activities that you can do outside of the main missions in terms of secondary missions or just going off and doing things like fishing or hunting or trying to you know go get different rare horses out in the wild and tame them. There are a lot of different activities that you can do in Red Dead Redemption 2, and that's not even talking about Red Dead Online, which, for better or for worse, is in a weird state of limbo right now. Um, but we're not here to talk about Red Dead Online. We're here to talk about Red Dead Redemption 2. And is it worth it in 2023? Should I play this game? If I've never played it before, should I take the time to play it? If I've played it before in the past, should I pick it up and redo it again? Um, just, is it worth it in 2023? And I think my answer to that is a resounding Yes. Now, I have played this game through twice before. Um, I have this on the PlayStation. The footage here that you're seeing is captured on my PS4 Slim, so I can't actually do the 1920 by 1080 but you can see here, even in the 1280 by 720 it still looks pretty damn good. And it, it has aged a tiny little bit over the years, but I don't think it looks bad that bad at all and honestly I think it holds up very very well against some of the modern releases that have come out in 2022 2023 even so far um, but as beautiful as this game is it's the gritty realism of the game that pulls me in every time I sit down and play this game which is why I jokingly told someone during a random live stream a few weeks back they asked me are you doing a third playthrough of this game and I went no I'm just logging in to you know get some footage recorded with, like this because I've been recording these missions and putting them up on YouTube as standalone chapters just for people who want to sink their teeth into you know 20 to 30 minutes worth of gameplay footage with me you know narrating on top of it um, and that's one of the things I really like about this game too is that you can choose to either play it in little, you know, chapter segments if you want, jumping in for an hour here and there, or just 30 minutes as you have time, or you could choose to sit down and play for three or four hours and get a ton of enjoyment out of this game. So, along with the main storylines, you've got, like I said, the hunting, the fishing, the horse catching, you've got bounty hunting, you've got train robbing, you've got stagecoach robbing, you've got all these different activities that you can pursue, and that's not even getting into the customization options with your character in terms of what kind of hat do you want? What kind of clothes do you want? You've noticed um, as you get deeper into my play sessions, you notice that I eventually trade my hat out for a Clint Eastwood style kind of flat brim, which I don't have in this in this episode yet. But um, everybody's got a different way of customizing the way their Arthur Morgan character looks. And then when you get into Red Dead Online, how that character looks. And I still love the fact that Red Dead Online out of this game, you know, Chris watched me play Red Dead to the first two times I played through this game, she watched it. She's not watching this one because she's busy with other stuff, but um, she was interested enough in this game that when I started playing Red Dead Online a few years back, she actually, for the first time ever, picked up a PlayStation controller and started playing Red Dead Online because she liked watching me play Red Dead Redemption 2 so much. Um, this game also has the distinct, uh, I'm going to give it an award here, um, for having the best horse control uh, horse controls, horse, horse animations, horse everything of any game I have ever played in the history of video games. Um, I grew up on a dairy farm and also a cattle ranch and grew up riding horses my whole life until I was in my late teens. I've gone back periodically. I go back and spend time at my brother's ranch, ride horses there. My, my sister was in a barrel racing when she was a teenager. Um, my brother got into um, team roping and... Uh, junior roping when he was younger and got into it on an amateur track up until he was in his late teens early 20s before he got into ranching full-time and he still rides horses on a daily basis and ropes and takes care of a cattle ranch and we have both played the hell out of this game and the things they have done with the horse animations the behaviors the way it responds 
everything in this game when it comes to horse riding is absolutely freaking spot on and epic just it's so well done um so it's another win in the category of a game that adds so much realism to the world that it feels like a living world it's very easy for me to do what i've been doing which is i log in you know i get up at 1 32 o'clock in the morning i log in and i play for usually three hours um, two to three hours with coffee and i'm recording my sessions over that um but it's really easy for me to just lose myself because it is this this world that i can just log into and suddenly i'm no longer sitting in my office i am arthur morgan and i am exploring the wild west and maybe i'm going fishing today or i'm hunting uh, for those rare pelts because i want to make the next bag which there's a lot of stuff despite the fact that i've done two playthroughs i've never done like the um all of the uh dinosaur bones as an example or all of the um different types of bags that you can craft to get like the ultimate bag and all this other stuff i've never done any of the satchels or any of that stuff so this time around i've been actively looking at doing a lot more stuff like that because i'm playing it at a more casual pace and when i played it before i wasn't in the um career path of being a content creator on youtube so now i have an excuse to do it again because it's just free content um i really wish and I don't know that they ever will, but it would be really cool if they spun back around and did another Red Dead game. Because the first Red Dead was really good from a storyline perspective. And this game did so well expanding upon that and providing a, a prequel. This game also has the distinction of being the first video game I've ever played that made me cry. I weeped like a child at the end of the main act, if you will. I mean, I suppose I could give away spoilers at this point. Um, so just for the safety of people who may not have ever played this game, there's going to be a spoiler ahead. So spoiler alert, five, four, three, two, one. Here's the spoiler. Of course, Arthur Morgan passes at the end of the main act. There's no way around it. That's part of the storyline of the game. Oh, yeah. And how you choose to live your life up to that point is so amazing because it it lends itself to endings that are completely different. Um, and the first time, actually, at both times I've played through, I've gone through as an honorable character, and the ending just rips me up every time. But the first time, it was the first game that ever made me openly weep. The sunset shot and the music and everything as Arthur Morgan is, you know, you know, doing what he did to sacrifice himself to save John Marston and give John Marston the life that he then lives out in Red Dead Redemption just gutted me. Um, and, and it's great too. Cause when you go back and replay the game, like I'm doing now, you know, that that point's coming. So you're, it's like, you're actively trying to draw the game out as long as you can and draw the storyline as out as much as possible. So that you don't ever have to actually get to that point. So there's a lot of me just running around and doing all these side quests and missions that I missed the first times I played through the game, which first time was when it launched. And then the second time was... Man, I want to say it was right when we first moved to Mexico City, which would have been like end of 2017, beginning of 2018. So it's been, you know, five years or so. Um, so um, it's held up very well over the years. And I think for your for your money's worth, I don't know how much it costs these days, whether you're playing it on the uh, PS or PlayStation. I noticed it's available. I did not know this. Like I was on the Xbox store and it's actually available on the Xbox. Um, I saw that the other day. Um, and as much as I would love to play it on the Series X, I already own it for the PS4, so there's no reason for me to go out and buy it again. Um, but I think that no matter what you pay for this game, whether it's a discounted price or you pay, you know, the full 60 bucks or whatever it is, it's absolutely worth it. This is one of the coolest games I think you'll ever play. And what's interesting to me is that even if you don't like the Western theme or you think that you're not going to like it because it's a Western I don't think you know what you're missing out on because even though this game is a Western up front, there is a ton of just gameplay that's very similar to other games. Like there's the shooter element, there's the RPG element, there's the, um, you know, getting, making your character's stats better. There's, um, 
you know, needing to upgrade your camp and update your gear, update your weapons, update your cosmetics. Hell, you don't even just update your own cosmetics. You can also update the cosmetics on your horse. So you can get different saddles and stirrups and saddle bags and saddle horns and and um, uh, bags, uh, rolls for camp rolls for sleeping on and everything else. There's all these things that you can do to customize the way your horse looks, as well as different types of horses, all of which have different statistics from nags that are really slow and can haul things but um don't have a lot of speed to them to you know like the arabians which are like some of the best horses in the game and you can either tame them in the wild there's a white one that you can get or you can go buy one and they cost them just insane amount of money um but there's it's just everything's really really well done in this game so like i said you might think that you wouldn't like it because it's a western but if you can put it out of your mind that it's a western there's so many gameplay elements here that pull you in that you very quickly forget that you're playing a western and it's just like this is just a really good rpg at the end of the day this is just a really good story driven role-playing game with amazing cutscenes and deep deep storytelling deep character arcs you know bad people some of them who are good people doing bad things to survive and some of them who are just bad people doing bad things because that's what they want to do food for thought anyway i think it's worth it go out there play it if you haven't already if you like this video don't forget to like subscribe hit that bell icon support if you can with memberships as well as the uh, super chats and super stickers and super thanks and all those things don't forget we've also got a patreon page for our own point and click adventure game fantasy world tabletop game book series and beyond there's a discord down below as well hopefully we'll see you in another video stay safe everybody and happy gaming out there. Hopefully you'll uh, get your bounty. Get your bounties in this game like I just did with this character. Now we got to ride back to town and turn him in. All right, folks. Until then, see ya. Have fun.